Hello again, everyone, and welcome to a short stop with a short stop. We're going to talk a little bit about second chances today, or maybe even a foul ball. If we look at some of the things that I did when I coached at the University of Pikeville. I had a, a player on my team, he was a freshman, and uh, we were getting ready to go to Florida, and I told them that they needed to be on the bus at five o'clock in the morning. And this young man, missed, he overslept and he missed the bus. And I had a rule, if you missed the bus, we were gone without you. And we were traveling down 23 going south, but for some reason, the young man woke up and, and tried to get there, but he started on, he went on 23 North. He went the absolutely wrong way that we were going, but he missed the whole week's trip in Florida. But later on in that season, uh, I had a rule that you don't throw your helmet and, uh, or any type of equipment. You don't throw your bat or your helmet. I told them if they wanted to beat on a chair or anything of the property of the college, that I'd say go ahead and take your bat and go on out there and beat your car. Hit your windshield, hit your fenders, but none of them would ever do that. But this young man during a game one time threw his helmet and I took him out. And uh, he didn't like it, didn't like it at all. Uh, but it was one of the rules that we had. Because later on at the end of that season, he, uh, came up to me and said, Coach, thank you for doing what you did. He said, you're the only coach that's ever held me accountable. But today, this young man is a doctor, and he saved a lot of lives and done a lot of good things with, with what he did. But he went on and got his education. He, he had a second chance. But if we look at the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32, you have a young man that wanted his inheritance right now, and his father gave it to him. He went out and squandered every single bit of it, and he was doing some very sinful things. But he was a Jew, and he ended up having to eat what the pigs ate, what the hogs ate, and it was just a, a very bad situation for him. But he realized how bad that it was, and he wanted to go back home. And he started back home, and on his way there, his father saw him. But his father didn't just walk to him or wait for that son to come to him. His father literally ran to him, gave him a second chance, put a ring on him, put a coat on him, threw a party for him. He gave him a second chance. If we look at John Mark and the Apostle Paul and Barnabas, in Acts chapter 13, verse 13, it says, now Paul and his companions put out to sea from Pampos and came to Perga in Pamphylia, But John Mark left them and returned to Jerusalem. John Mark literally deserted the Apostle Paul. Paul didn't like it. And if we go on and look over, we're going to see a, a very big argument. And I can literally see the sparks coming out of the Apostle Paul's eyes when he's talking to Barnabas. In verse 37, it says, Barnabas wanted to take John Mark along with them on their second missionary journey, but Paul kept insisting that they should not take him. Uh, he, he did not go with them to do the work. And there occurred such a sharp disagreement that they separated from one another, and Barnabas took John Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. Barnabas and, John, and Paul separated from each other because they had a sharp disagreement. If we turn on over to 2 Timothy chapter 4, and verse 11. Now this is the Apostle Paul talking. He said, only Luke is with me. He said, pick up John Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful for me in my service. The Apostle Paul got over it. He gave John Mark a second chance. I probably would have been mad too if I'd have been on a mission trip and John Mark just flat left me without saying anything, he's just, he just gone. But Paul said no, he said send for him, because I have use for him. Then if we look in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, we have a man that 
had a wife that wasn't, it was literally his father's wife. But yet the apostle Paul said, turn him over to Satan. In other words, get, get rid of him, disfellowship him. And the congregation did. And then, but we turn over in the uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 6. Sufficient for such a one is the punishment which was afflicted by the majority. So on the contrary, you should rather forgive and comfort him. Otherwise, such a one might be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. So the apostle Paul is telling him to forgive the man because he has repented. He gave the man a second chance. But the congregation showed him love with the discipline. And that's the love of God, the way that we should do it too. But when somebody repents and wants to be sorrow for what they've done, we need to be able to forgive. And in Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 and 22, the apostle Peter asked Jesus, if somebody sins against us, how many times should we forgive them? And he said, seven times. And Jesus looked at Peter and says, not seven times, but seven times 70. And he wasn't meaning 449 times. He was meaning every single time that they asked for forgiveness that we should forgive them. For if we look at Jesus Christ and what he said, his last words, when he was on that cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. If he can forgive people that had literally sent him to the cross, we should be able to give, forgive people and give people a second chance. Because sometimes when we're standing up at the plate and we have two strikes on us and we foul the ball off, we have another chance. And if we give other people other chances, you know what? They might just hit a home run on that next pitch. Thank you again for being with a shortstop with a shortstop.